In this video, I'm going to talk about hemoglobin A1C goals. As you probably know or may know, the hemoglobin A1C is sort of the critical test in diabetes management. And the number may be something, you know, in the ball, it can maybe in the fives, sixes, sevens, eights, somewhere in this ballpark or even higher. That's the number that you usually see every three or four months when your doctor or your healthcare provider checks the numbers. But basically the way this is done, what happens is the, um, these are red blood cells in the body. And you may wonder how you have this single test that can check an average over three months, an average of your sugars over a three month period. And what happens in the body normally is that everybody gets sugar deposits on their red blood cells normally, just as you go over the course of your daily activities and your sugars rise normally and go down normally, you get sugar deposits on your red blood cells. <coughs> But if you have diabetes and your sugars are higher than average, you'll get more deposits on these red blood cells, more sugar deposits. And this can be measured with a number, this hemoglobin A1C value. It's a three month average because the lifespan of a red blood cell is three months. So when you draw the blood, you have red blood cells that are three months old, two and a half months old, two months old, a month old two days old and this gives you an average of the sugars over three months because of the lifespan of a red blood cell and a normal value in most labs is below 6.0 percent that's a normal sort of a non-diabetes value um, generally speaking um, and it, this varies person to person but anything generally below seven is considered to be pretty good and anything much this is normal here this is fairly good for most people but it, there are exceptions and over 7.0 percent over this is not too good now the goals for the where we get that hemoglobin A1C depend on a number of things. And one of the biggest things is what treatment you're undergoing. That is a big determinant as to where the goals are. Let's say this is the low end of the normal range for sugars. This is like a big barrier. That's the low end of normal. That's the upper end of normal right here. Up here it's sugars are too high and here they're too low but this here is our normal range okay now there are a number of medications and treatments which will take numbers that are high push them down towards normal but they won't cause you to go too low they sort of stop at the low end of normal And this includes, well, diet and exercise, but also the medications metformin, Actos, or its counterpart of Andia, and the medications Bieta and Genuvia. All of these medications and treatments are considered non-hypoglycemic treatments. They'll basically take high numbers, pull them down to normal, but they won't push you too low. Now there are exceptions. There's some people who don't even have diabetes and they may experience low sugar episodes. So it's not impossible to develop low sugar events on these medications, but generally speaking, for all intents and purposes, any of these or a combination of these really tends not to cause low sugar events. Now the certain treatments that will tend to push the sugars below the normal range. 
Okay. And these medications include sulfonylureas, and this is like amaryl, glucotrol, and the generics glimepiride, glipizide, medicines like that. Starlex, Prandin, and any insulin can push the sugars too low. So I consider these non-hypoglycemic treatments, and these are hypoglycemic treatments, or potentially hypoglycemic treatments. If you take a regimen like this and add any of these into it, all bets are off, and it can take a non-hypoglycemic regimen and push you low. The importance of splitting these two types of uh, treatments into two different categories is that if you're on a non-hypoglycemic regimen, there's, for all intents and purposes, there's basically no risk of lows or almost no risk of lows. And so we feel comfortable driving the hemoglobin A1C down quite low safely. And often, as endocrinologists, we often try to, and many people, but not everybody, try to get the hemoglobin A1C below 6 in the normal range if we can. Or at least if we get it towards 6 or less, we feel more comfortable about a person not having low sugar events. Once you're on any of these medications into in the mix, it gets a little trickier and a, a, a little tougher to get the hemoglobin A1C safely down towards 6. So people on these regimens, often if you get the number uh, below 7 or significantly below 7, that's pretty good, or significantly below 7 without many hypoglycemic events, we consider that usually to be pretty good. So basically, you know, we can categorize the goals for various people as follows. And again, this very much varies person to person. But if a person's on a non-hypoglycemic regimen, we often try to get the hemoglobin A1C down towards 6 or less. So this is on a non-hypo regimen. Anyone on a hypoglycemic regimen, generally if we can get it below 7.0%, um, this is a hypoglycemic regimen, if we can get it below 7.0% while minimizing low sugar events, we usually consider that pretty good. And if we can get it towards 6, all the better, without lows. Now, there are exceptions here. You know, if we have someone who is very elderly, or frail and they can't respond to low sugar events, sometimes we set the goal, we'll just call these people, you know, those who are frail. We might set the goal at 7.5% or some even higher, just because we don't want to push it too low, because in some of those folks it can be quite dangerous to have a low sugar event. Or there's certain people who have hypoglycemic, what's called hypoglycemic unawareness. And for one reason or another, they can't feel symptoms of hypoglycemia. For these people, we might only push the goal perhaps to 7.0% or 75 And then there's another group based on the ACCORD trial or data from this uh, trial called the, called the ACCORD trial. Many people with diabetes and a history of coronary disease, we might only push the hemoglobin A1C down to around 7 and not much lower. So we'll say DM, diabetes mellitus, plus coronary disease. We might push it down towards 7 and maybe not much further for some people with diabetes and coronary disease, not everyone. But the key point here, I think, with all of this is that the goals are very individual, uh, very individualized, very specific, and you really have to ask your health care provider what's best for you in any given, you know, for what your hemoglobin A1C goal should be.